Dungaree was a town of sludge and mud. It smelled of sewage and chewed up cud. It had no regular garbage truck. The river burbled with rust and muck. But what they were known for in Dungaree was the sweetest bluegrass and the coldest iced tea. Dungaree's musical appreciation set it apart from the rest of the nation. The townspeople valued musicians and song and kept the traditions of harmony strong. Each night there were gigs playing down every street and you couldn't help walk to a bass line or beat. Late into the night as the gig slowly ended, the sound of bluegrass perfection descended. Some looked for the source of that glorious sound. They searched high and low, but it never was found. Each musician assumed it was some mother trio who played with such gusto and fervor and brio. But the trio, Tim Canyon, who played for a musician who suffered from one of the most feared conditions. By night, they could play to the bullfrogs and litter. But put them on stage, they just shiver and jitter. It wasn't just stage fright. That's cured with analysis. What these fellas had was proscenium paralysis. See digs on the fiddle? We'd make those strings sing with a moan and a wail that haunted the wind. On the banjo was Jed, he could pick, pluck, and roll. He played like a demon for such a kind soul. Now Scuff played the bass, it was heavy and true. With a bass line so steady, it walked up to you. They lived on Sludge River in that dangling shack attached by its roof to a rattling track. It was not up to snuff. It was not built to code. It wasn't accessible by any road. On groceries, their paychecks from odd jobs were spent. So they fell ever further behind on their rent. One night at their door came a knock and a yell. It was mean Jimmy Timber, the landlord from hell. I want my money, or I'll break your faces. Then I'll smash your instruments inside their cases. Diggs tried to reason, and Scuff tried to hide. We just need more time, Jed nobly cried. I'll give you a week until our next meeting, and I'll get my money, or you'll get a beating. To Thomas Root's bar, the boys trudged in fear. When he saw them, he poured them three mugs of root beer. You're looking real low, and you seem to be thinner. Too much on rent, and nothing for dinner. Well, look here, said Root, pointing up at the wall, where a poster announced a great open call. A battle for the title of best bluegrass band. Help us decide who is first in the land. Our sponsor, Swingo, has put up the prize. So sign up your band and watch your star rise. Imagine us winning a thousand, said Scuff. We'd pay up our rent and have more than enough. If it wasn't so sad, it would almost be funny. We'll have to find some other way to make money. But I see you buy your instrument strings, said Root. Don't you know how to play the damn things? When the band explained their gut-churning fear, Root said, don't worry, your new trainer's here. He taught them to meditate and be aware, to picture the audience in underwear. They played to the mirror and visualized cheers and thought of the kudos they'd get from their peers. But the gimmick that worked on their nervousness fastest was playing while wearing the darkest sunglasses. You really don't need them to play, Root insisted. But Tim Canyon's jitters without them persisted. The sponsor's large banner was hung in the air. 
the bar top gleamed bright as the MC's slick hair. The house was packed full of musicians and fans, the stage set with speakers and microphone stands. But Jed, Scuff, and Diggs turned a spectrum of greens. On the band list they read, Timber's Tambourines. Root said, don't you worry about anyone here. Half the band's already dropped out because of fear. You've practiced, you're ready, you've practically won. But Timber leaned over and hissed, ain't this fun? You think you can beat me? This contest is mine. I hope you all know what you've put on the line. But the battle had started and soon it was clear that it was Tin Canyon the crowd sought to hear. For them, the crowd whooped and waved makeshift pennants, while Timber got votes from his terrified tenants. As the battle advanced, the word spread across town. Dungaree's mystery band had been found. Jimmy Timber was slowly becoming more furious. What's with the damn glasses? He asked, getting curious. Backstage, Scuff and Jet had a bit of a rest while Diggs thought retuning his fiddle was best. But as their turn to go on stage neared, they realized, with horror, their shades disappeared. They sweat and they shook, and they leaned on the wall. The announcer was nervously trying to stall. Backstage, there appears to be a slight concern. To avoid a delay, the next band takes their turn. It's down to these finalists and no one between, so please give it up. For Timber's Tambourines! Tin Canyon's sense of despondency rose when they saw three black sunglasses on Timber's nose. He snarled. They look cool. I decided to take them. But now that I'm finished, I guess I'll just break them. The crowd barely moved. The announcer was fumbling. Tin Canyon was frozen, uncertain, and mumbling. If you don't go on, then I guess I'm all set. Or hasn't old Root let you in on our bet? Root said, at the bank, I'm in arrears, and Timber's been trying to buy this for years. So I said if you won, he'd have to atone, and pay me some money, and leave me alone. But if you can't go on, said Timber with glee, I guess Root Saloon will be renamed by me. <laughs> The boys of Tin Canyon saw what was at stake. The MC said, Now for a short sponsored break. Dig's anger was rising. He banged down his bow. Then the sound from the fiddle was twangy and low. Jed banged on his banjo and scuff on his bass. A new revelation dawned over his face. If we can make noise, Scuff started to say. You think we can try? Jed whispered, to play? They stood off the stage on the ground with the crowd, and their tentative playing got crazy and loud. Our last band of the night, the MC announced, as onto the stage he hurriedly pounced. Down with the audience, Tim Canyon was able to play, and they played at the bar on a table. Their nervousness came from the actual stage. A decent epiphany to have at their age. When they finished, the crowd gave a raucous ovation. From Swingo and all of the staff at the station, we're pleased to hand over the Bluegrass Award to the Trio Tin Canyon. My, how that crowd was. All 
I'll lock up your house and take all your possessions! Timber yelled and stomped with his usual aggression. He tore through the town like a pinless grenade across the old bridge that creaked as it swayed. He charged like a rhino prepared to attack and stormed up the steps to Tim Canyon's old shack. But due to his decades of negligence there, the struts and the floor were in deep disrepair. As he hoisted up chains and a giant steel lock, the creaky old structure started to rock. The whistle that blew from the oncoming train was the last sound that entered his violent brain. The burbling sludge slowly took him away. He hasn't been seen in the town to this day. Dungaree got a mare and fixed up the sewer. Tin Canyon took off on their first major tour. And record deals followed, and fortune, and fame. Now everyone knows their music and name. The people of Dungaree talk of that night when the trio Tin Canyon stood up for what's right. Timber, they say, ran himself out of town, while Tin Canyon went on to success and renown. Now Dungaree's known for its musical cheer and Tin Canyon's sweet bluegrass and Tom Root's root beer.